Hello and welcome to Lady Diamond Creates. Today I'll be showing you how I made my mermaid with a jointed tail. For my base doll, I went looking through my stock box for my broken ones and I happened to run across this Abby and I thought she would be perfect. She's missing one leg just below the knee, but I just really wanted to make sure she had those upper thighs. I'm going to break off this other leg, but we're going to save that to use as part of an armature for the lower portion of the tail. I jump right in with prepping and shave her hair down with my electric trimmers. Once her hair is shaved to a nice stubble, I put her into a cup of boiled water. This is just going to let her vinyl get nice and squishy so I can easily pull it off. The water is very hot, so I'm using a washcloth to help protect my hands. Remember, safety first! Then using my flathead screwdriver, I scrape the plugs out from inside the head. I notice that the area right around where her bangs was looks a little rough, and so I want to be very careful to not widen that hole. Using needle nose pliers, I remove all of the glue and gunky hair from inside the head. This is easily my least favorite part of doll customizing, but also my favorite. I hate dealing with it when it's this gluey mess, but there's something so satisfying about pulling a hunk of gluey hair out all in one go. With 100% acetone, I remove all of the factory paint. After all the factory paint is gone, you can tell there is a few areas that have some rips in the scalp. So what I'm going to do to combat this is take and put her head in boiling water for about two to three minutes. This allows the vinyl to expand some where it had been previously compressed by the hair plugs. And you can see how much better those plugs already look. However, there are some areas that are still split, so we're going to apply a little bit of liquid fusion glue onto those holes. I use my finger to spread it out into a thin layer, then I set it aside to dry for 24 hours. While that's drying, let's go ahead and tackle her body. Now, I've only ever worked on one Abby before, and the whole reason behind that is this stupid glitter that's all over her skin. So let's get to work sanding this off. I sand for what feels like days and days and days, and since she is going to be a mermaid as well, I do need to remove those molded on panties, so I take my X-Acto blade and very carefully scrape down on those panties. And for those <coughs> hard to reach areas, I take a fine grit jewelry file and sand those down. I use acetone-free nail polish remover to clean her body and to get off any of those stuck, stubborn pieces of glitter. Because all that sanding took an eternity, the glue is now dry. Now I can paint her scalp in a couple of coats of acrylic paint that's in a coral color that is similar to the hair. I'm rereading her in metallic blush pink and metallic coral hair from the Doll Planet. I plan to alternate these colors as I'm rerooting, but I do plan to have more of the metallic blush pink on the top and more of the coral on the bottom just to give that natural gradient that hair gets from getting sun bleached. I reroute in my typical manner where I loop the hair around my finger, slide the hair onto the needle, and then tighten the loop. Finally, I just plug it into the head. I do take care when I'm rerouting any of those areas that were damaged and had to have the liquid fusion applied. From my experience, when rerouting a head that has had some small tears in it, to avoid making those larger, when you plug the needle in, make sure you're not squishing and compressing the head down because that will cause those rips to get bigger, even if they have been previously reinforced. I hadn't decided 100% yet on what kind of hairstyle I wanted for her, so since she didn't have an existing part line, I created one and just plugged some holes down the center, and then I go back into the same holes and pull the hair in the opposite direction. It's a pretty basic style that can work with almost anything. I secure the hair with a little bit of liquid fusion glue, just squirt some into the head, and then squish it around with a Q-tip, making sure to touch all the plugs. I then sit her aside to dry for 24 hours. I found these ball and socket joints on Amazon and I thought these actually might work to make a mermaid tail, so I wanted to give them a try and ordered some. I planned for her to have two of these joints, one at her knee and one down at the tip of her tail so that I can actually pose the fin. After removing them from the packaging, I sand down any of the little bits that are still on there so that they have a good fit. I glue the legs together at the knee. This is just going to secure them while I apply epoxy later. As you can see, she's still got movement with her legs, even with them super glued together. Using a drill, I drill a hole to accommodate the peg for the socket joint. Once 
Once I see that it fits, I secure it with a little bit of super glue. I need to make sure that I'm keeping the socket joint aligned correctly because if it is the wrong direction, then I won't have full movement. Now to tackle the lower part of the tail. I sand the top of that leg down just so that I'm able to drill a hole comfortably there. And even with it sanded down, it still gave me some trouble. Then once it fits, glue it in place. Now time to bust out the epoxy sculpt. I measure out equal parts of A and B and then wearing my rubber gloves, get those thoroughly mixed. Now I start slapping that stuff and making a tail. Any of the areas I apply, I make sure to keep the movement. There is the area right around her crotch and butt that I have to be wary of, as well as the two areas with the socket joints. Anytime I get epoxy down into that joint, I stop and clean it off. I constantly check the movement to make sure that I'm not freezing up any of these joints. I find that a little bit of water on your hands will help smoothing out any of those transitions really well. I'm actually in the middle of packing up our entire house. We're going to be moving at the end of this month, so working on this doll was just a little bit of a... I don't know. I don't know what you want to call it, but when I was packing, I felt like I should be working on the doll. And when I was working on the doll, I felt like I should be packing. I just, I couldn't win. <laughs> just to give you a heads up, because of the move, I might not have a video out in August, but you can definitely look for one in September. I'm pretty excited about the move. I'm going to have my own room to work in, so I won't have to record voiceover in the middle of the night. Our current setup is so bad, I actually have to turn our air off in Southern California in the middle of summer because my mic picks up the air compressor. With the first pass done on the top portion of the tail, I move on to the lower portion of the tail. I felt like this leg portion that we were going to be using for the tip of the tail was still just a little bit too bulky, so I'm using my Dremel with a cutoff blade to cut off the heel and the toes. Now that I'm happy with the end of that structure, I can drill a hole for the final joint, and when that fits, I can glue it into place. To sculpt the caudal peduncle, I need to embed the socket joint into a little bit of uh, the epoxy sculpt. So I pull off a chunk that's about as big as I want to work with, and then I slowly start shaping it out. When I'm happy with the overall shape, I take an X-Acto blade and I'm going to slice up the middle of that. My goal is to have an empty slot there because I want to be able to slide a fabric fin into that space. To ensure that space stays open, I am taking a Ziploc bag that is filled with a little bit of junk mail to my desired thickness and just sliding that between the two slats. I'm not trying to get a perfect shape right now. It's just a little too difficult at this stage. I'm working with two pieces that I'm trying to keep open as well as get a specific shape. So I'm just trying to get a general larger shape than what I need and I will file that down later. With the top portion of the fin cured, I can now work on the area below that joint. When I'm building up my shape here, I'm just really making sure that I get the overall silhouette that I want and making sure that it still does not interfere with the top or the bottom joints. With everything cured, I check all of the movement to make sure nothing is broken, and then I get back to sanding. Again. 
I know I'm going to be covering these in a scale, but I still want my overall shapes to be smooth and no lumpy bumpy mess underneath. I first tackle the caudal peduncle and just make sure I have a shape that I'm happy with. I start off using the metal files to refine the shape quickly, then I use the finer grit sandpapers to smooth out my work. And this was another eternity of sanding. Ugh. Once everything is smooth and sanded, I can get started on the scales. I wanted her scales to look similar to those that you see on sea turtles right around their face and on their flippers. To make these, I roll out a thin snake of the epoxy sculpt and I just pull off little bitty pinches. Then I roll into a ball and then just squish down onto the tail. Every time I'm grabbing up different sizes and shapes and then just filling in the holes as I see them. And I do this and coat the entire tail. It took forever. When I reached the areas that had movement, I would take my pencil and mark where those areas would be intersecting at and made sure not to put any of the scales over that line. I add a few scales up her body to give a transition from skin to scales. Here's the tail after I finished all of those scales. Hours and hours and hours of scales. To make her top, I'm going to use this silicone starfish mold. I just mix up a little bit of epoxy sculpt and then squish it down into the mold. I make sure to push the epoxy down in there very well so that there's not any gaps and I also want to make sure it's not bulging over the top so it fits better to the doll. I bend the mold to help remove it, this way I don't squish away any of the details. After I've got it out of the mold, I lay it onto my mannequin doll and just arrange it to where I like it. I wrap my mannequin up with some plastic wrap just to make sure that this epoxy didn't stick to her skin. I did have some areas that lost their detail once I formed it to the chest, so to bring those back I'm going to use this needle tool and just define it a little bit better. I then leave this to cure. Once cured I'm going to give it a coat and primer and paint it white. On to the face up. Here's all the colors that I wound up using. I used various brands of watercolor pencils as well as some Derwent metallics and some pan pastels. I mixed up a custom color for the pan pastels this time combining that red and the orangish peach color to get that bright coral that I'm going to use later in the face up. I start things off by prepping her with a couple of layers of Mr. Super Clear and after that final layer has had a chance to cure for at least 30 minutes, I get started sketching out her eye shape. One trick that I like to do to try to make sure I'm matching things to make them symmetrical is flipping the doll upside down and looking at them. Another trick is to hold it up to a mirror and look in the mirror. This way you will be able to see the differences in symmetry. Once I'm happy with her eye shape, I fill in the whites of her eyes with my Caran d'Ache watercolor pencil. I previously had always used a Faber-Castell pastel pencil on this and had noticed that it was a little bit thicker on the eyes, so I wanted to try using this watercolor pencil that had a really good coverage to see if I noticed a difference. Now I jump right in with some contouring with pastels, and here is where I make my mistake. I wanted to try some purple. However, I'm using the pan pastels and they are so highly pigmented when I realized I didn't like it, I started trying to erase it and wipe it off. That didn't work. So I'm like, okay, I will use a wet cloth. That didn't work. It was just on there. So instead, I did have to take some acetone and remove all of that stuff off. I did keep her eyes, so I just used a Q-tip and made sure to go in and go around the eyes instead of wiping them off as well. I was happy with how they looked and didn't want to remove them. So after it's all off, I give her a couple more layers of Mr. Super Clear and then get started on layer one, part two. <laughs> this time I start with a full layer of pale blue pastel just all over her face just to make sure I'm going to be able to blend those colors better. I think that was ultimately part of the problem with that purple not coming up as well as I didn't have that base down. Then I jump straight into doing all the contouring around the nose, the mouth, the ears, and the eyes. 
I use my stubby little brushes for all the tight spaces and then I use a really fluffy one to do around the temples and the hollows of her cheeks. Then I first tried to blush her with a very pale pink and it was just not working for the skin tone. It looks all right, but I really wanted something to pop more. So I take the time to mix up a brighter color and it was when I popped it onto the lips that I realized I really like this. I want to use it in more places. So I go ahead and blush it onto her eyelids and her cheeks. I like it much better. It matches her hair a lot better too. I use a dark turquoise pencil to define the eyelid crease and then start smoking out those eyes with some darker pastel. I darken the eyelash line with a black watercolor pencil. I use an eraser to clean up some of the stray pastel that landed on the sclera and then go back in and brighten that up with another layer. I define her waterline with a pink pencil and then in the tear duct and corners of the eyes, I brighten it up with a hint of red. Using a darker pink, I define the pouty area of her lips. Before moving on to layer two, I darken up her nostrils. At the start of layer two, I darken up the area where the two lips meet. For this, I'm lifting the paint directly off of a watercolor pencil with a wet brush. This is a very fine nail art brush that I'm using here. It's a quadruple zero. I define some detail lines to her lips in various shades of pinks and whites, and then I highlight that cupid's bow. With a turquoise pencil, I deepen the shadows on the fulcrum as well as define the edge of the nostrils. Now to get started on her eyes. When I'm working on eyes, I tend to have three colors, the lightest, the mid, and the darkest tone I'm going to use in them. When I start defining my iris shape, I usually go with my middle tone. Once I'm happy with my iris placement, I go in and start blocking out all of the colors. I pump up her eyeshadow with some darker tones towards the corners and then blush a little bit of this lighter pink pastel onto the center. I darken up her eyeliner and then with a white watercolor pencil, I go around and highlight around her tear duct and right under the eye. I then pop that highlight just a little bit more by using a darker turquoise to edge right under that line. Then to pop the contrast in her eyes just a little bit more, I dot in some pale blue pastel. Now for her eyebrows, I'm using a coral colored pastel that matches her hair and I'm just going to liberally place this in the area where I want her eyebrows to be. Then using one of my pencil erasers, I start refining that shape up. Once happy, I seal and we start on layer three. I define her pupil placement and then I start adding in some of the darker striations. Once I'm happy with those, I go in with my white watercolor pencil and add in some white striations too. In several different shades of pinks and whites, I start adding in the individual hairs to her eyebrows. I want them nice and fluffy. To give her eyes a more round look, I start adding in gray shadows to the scleras. With a very sharp watercolor pencil, I add in her lower lashes. 
I first go in with my harder lead just to define the length of the lashes and then I go in with my softer lead. I like the smoky effect that it gives to the lashes. That was it for layer 3. I didn't want to apply the top lashes yet because I didn't want a chance ruining some of the areas I'd worked on previously. So I'm sealing here and then starting layer 4. And at the start of layer 4, I plop down those top lashes. I use the same technique as the bottom lashes. Now I add in her catch lights and all of the highlights to the waterline, and I'm going to be using a silver watercolor to do that this time. I thought it would add an interesting effect because a lot of fish eyes have that silvery nature to them, and I thought, okay, she's a mermaid magical creature. It might look cool, and I'm really glad that I did. Now her face-up's all done. I'm very happy with how she turned out. I feel like these are some of the best eyes I've ever done. I ran into a few hiccups with her hair. My first style, I felt like it just didn't translate well to doll scale, so I started over. And the second time, I felt like it was okay, but it was just missing something. So yet again, pulled it all out and started again. So third time's a charm, right? I start out by dividing the hair into four sections. There's the bottom section, and then the top section is divided into the main section, and then the two side sections. I pull the two side sections aside so that I can work on that middle top, and I just do a small braid down this, just a basic braid. I braid longer than I need, and then I tie it up higher. This way, the braid portion stays pretty in the area I want. Next, I work on the two side sections, and the first thing I do is pull away the two tiny pieces that I want to be baby hairs that aren't part of the style, just hanging down and framing her face. I clip those two framing pieces up out of my way. Now I braid those two side sections just a little bit longer than where the hair tie meets if I were to pull those around to the back. I clip one side in place while I braid the other side, and once both sides are braided, I connect those with a rubber band. Now I braid two more sections of hair and I'm just taking this hair from the nape areas on the right and left side and I start with one side and braid it all the way down. Then I'm going to wrap that up and just temporarily pin it in place right at the top front of her head. I rubber band the braid shorter and clip the ends and heat seal them. Then I pin them in place at the nape of her neck. Then I just accessorize her hair with some nail art decorations. You'll actually notice I did wind up removing the braid that was at the crown of her head. Just decided it was too poofy. Now let's paint her tail. I have already primed the epoxy with some gray primer and first thing I'm going to do is match up that blue area on her stomach. I don't know how far I want my color transitions to go up yet, so I do want to make sure that her blue is going to match all over. 
Next, I'm applying this coral color. I'm having it dip down lower in the front and higher up on her butt in the back. That's going to be the trend I use with all of the paints so that I'm pulling a darker stripe up her back. And don't forget to bend her and get into those crevices. I go in next with my purple following that same pattern, lower in the front, higher up in the back. One thing that I didn't know when I first started using an airbrush is your doll shouldn't look wet when you're using it. Ideally, when you are spraying your airbrush, you're using a dual action airbrush. So you are spraying a little bit of paint, then nothing but air, a little bit of paint, and then nothing but air. The air is drying the paint after you've put it on, so you shouldn't have really wet looking spots. And then I add my darkest color in, which is this really deep purple. It is almost a black. And then I hit it with this really vibrant yellow right on her belly. After I finished painting the tail, I did apply three layers of Liquitex Matte Varnish that I thinned down to use in my airbrush. I didn't show this because it literally looks like I'm doing nothing. I paint these same colors on her, her arms and then I coat her in a couple of layers of Mr. Super Clear and jump right into body blushing. I'm just contouring any area that feels like it will be a little bit more shaded. So right around her collarbones and I'm blushing the tops of her breasts and under them I'm darkening them and then darkening the center of her back. Once I'm happy with this, I seal her again. I've also primed my starfish and painted it white, prepped it with some Mr. Super Clear and start blushing on some peaches and corals and pinks to give it some pretty colors. I seal the starfish with some Mr. Super Clear and get her prepped for adding it to the doll's body. Originally, I was going to try some kind of a bra top where it could be removable, but in the end, I just was having so much trouble with it. I was like, nope, just scrap it. Let's just glue it straight to the body. Gluing things on dolls is not something I do a lot of, but in this particular case, I felt like it called for it. I was going to be able to do more with the bra top. Once the top is in place, I bust out the gem tack glue. This is glue specially for gluing gemstones and things because it dries clear. I start adding pearls and rhinestones and nail caviar just all over the top. Just add until I'm happy. The final coat of paint that I'm applying on the doll is this pearlescent sheen. I didn't do this before the MSC or the varnish because it actually dulls it down and takes it away. So if I really wanted this to have that pretty pearlescent sheen, it had to go last. It is pretty hard to tell here, but in person, it is very pretty. Now finally for her fin. For her tail fan, I'm using this iridescent crinkle organza and it's absolutely gorgeous and it has this color shift of blue purple green. So I've cut my pattern out of it and then I'm going to heat seal the edges with a lighter. This stuff frays like it's nobody's business so something definitely needed to be done to the edges. I do suggest being very careful when you're heat sealing because I burned a hole in my first one. Now just using a needle and thread, I knot one in and start gathering up that top long edge. I pull this gather as tight as I can and then knot it. To secure the fin into the caudal peduncle, I'm taking a little bit of that gem tack again. Like I said, it dries clear so I don't have to worry about it staining the fabric or seeping out and being very noticeable. So I liberally apply that inside that gap. I use a toothpick to spread the glue throughout the gap and then I slide the fabric fin into place. I use some fine tip tweezers to help me wedge it in there as far as possible. I want to make sure it has a nice snug fit. At the time this video goes live, she will be available on my Etsy store and I will only be having my store open for another week because I am in the middle of a move and while I'm moving, I will have it closed temporarily. All that's left is to assemble the doll. So I take her neck peg and squeeze it a little bit smaller so that I'll have an easier time getting that head on Then just pop her head on and then I pop on all of her joints now. With that, she's done. I wanted to thank you all so much for watching the video and if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Remember, always be creating!